Hello, welcome to Stirling. This is a city that has only been a city since 2002, but it is celebrating its anniversary of being a royal borough of Scotland for 900 years this year. So yeah, happy birthday, Stirling. My name is Kat, aka Kakibot, and today I am bringing you a little guide to this super popular destination for anyone who's starting in either Edinburgh or Glasgow or even in the Highlands, because this place is just like perfectly nestled between all of these very popular destinations. It just kind of connects them all. So it can be a great stopover. I think many people come here for a little day trip. Some people even stay overnight. And I guess one of the goals of this guidebook is to help you decide whether or not you want to just stop in for a quick visit or you want to stay overnight. There's quite a lot to see here. We're going to try and visit as much as possible and give you our honest opinions on what we think about the stuff that they there is to see and do. Uh, one thing I'm going to say straight away is that one of my favorite things about Sterling is that you get such views. Um, even here, like I'm standing in front of this old hospital building and I can basically, if I, if I turned around, I would basically see the Trossachs and they are covered in snow. This is end of February. It's not quite the main touristy season just yet. It's kind of quiet here. The hotels are cheap. So, you know, don't dismiss the idea of coming here in winter because you will see some dramatic snowy mountains. I am so excited about that. And Anyway, um, <laughs> I digress. Uh, we are gonna probably start by visiting the Stirling Castle, a castle that many of you have told me you prefer over Edinburgh Castle. So yeah, that's quite a bold claim and we're gonna investigate that. Getting into the castle will set you back almost £20, although it is only £17.50 if you buy your ticket online in advance, which takes the edge off a little bit. You can also get yourself a Historical Environment Scotland membership, which does give you free access not only to Stirling Castle, but also Edinburgh Castle. So if you're a real castle nut, it's worth looking into. Similarly to Edinburgh Castle, it is set on a rock formation created by a glacier movement, hence the same crag and tail look. In the 13th century, the castle has become an important strategic point for the wars of independence between Scotland and England, which is a part of Scottish history that is very hard to avoid when visiting the Stirling area. You're gonna learn about it whether you like it or not. This is also where Mary Queen of Scots spent most of her life. She has even been crowned here. Most of the rooms, which took a decade to recover to their former glory, are restored to look the way they did when she still walked the castle's halls. The castle visit will also lead you through wonderful gardens, which offer the first taste of those stunning views I promised earlier. Overall, it is hard for me to answer the cheeky question of whether this is a castle worth a visit more than Edinburgh Castle. They do have a lot of similarities, but I'll say Stirling Castle has better gardens and more dramatic views. Thank you. 
Now, if you can't quite justify the 20 quid to enter the castle, I'd say simply walking up to it to enjoy it from the outside and then having a stroll through what feels like Scotland's most scenic cemetery is a great alternative. Possibly the most eye-catching piece here is the Martyrs Monument, commemorating two sisters who refused to pledge allegiance to the king as leader of the church, instead true to their Presbyterian faith. The younger sister was eventually freed, but the older sister was sentenced to death by drowning. The Stirling Old Town Jail is, I'd say, the family option among the city's attraction list. A bit like the dungeon or Mary King's Close, this is an immersive experience with talented actors and an opportunity to visit restored cells. This is a spot to learn about the efforts to reform the Scottish prison system, which was both kinda enlightened and yet seriously misguided at times. Interesting stuff. Another little freebie to do in Sterling is the Sterling Smith Art Gallery and Museum. If you're on a budget, you will actually get a great opportunity to learn a lot about local history here. Yeah, you don't get to look at the same pretty ceilings Mary Queen of Scots did as she was taking the train to Sleepy Time Junction, but you'll see the world's oldest football, so that's something. Sterling as a city is also very worth having just a little stroll around. I very much enjoyed taking in all the architecture and the labyrinth of medieval streets. I'm just gonna warn you that Sterling, similarly to Edinburgh, is a place where you'll feel like every walk somehow happens to be uphill, like some sort of twisted MC Escher curse. Now, if you head up Gowan Hill, you will find not only more pretty views, but also the Beheading Stone. The beheading part of its history is still considered a legend, so I can't guarantee any actual manslaughter happened here. But King James I did use this little hill for this purpose, so even if the stone was just a bit of symbolism, the hill itself is still definitely haunted.
and just under Gowan Hill, you will find a beautiful old bridge built in 14 or 1500s, the Stirling Old Bridge. It was built as a replacement for its many timber precursors, most notably the one that stood nearby at the Battle of Stirling Bridge in 1297. So now we're done with all of the main easy to get to attractions of Stirling, and I think we very much need some coffee. Thankfully, Stirling does have at least three very well known, very nice coffee shops, so we are going to test those out now. Join us! Arguably Sterling's most famous coffee shop and roastery is Unorthodox Roasters. You will find their cockerel logo all over Scotland. Do not miss this place if you self-identify as a coffee nerd. This is a spacious spot with so many coffee styles to taste and a menu full of delicious sounding treats too. HPW was my favorite little find in Stirling, a popular brunch place with just the most friendly staff and delicious bakes to boot. Do not miss out on this space if you notice there's a free table inside. We actually ended up going twice, once for a treat and once for brunch. Booknook is a place I fell in love with years ago when I first got to explore Sterling. It is a little hidey hole for anyone looking for a new read and coffee or lunch, where the vibe is just perfect for a conversation about graphic novels or queer young adult fiction. Also, food-wise, we were recommended a visit to Hermann's, a place most famed for their Austrian schnitzels. As I am Austria-adjacent myself, let me tell you, if you are a homesick Central European, these schnitzels will make your heart sing. Plus, the wine was delightful. A really nice little Euro-foodie intermission for all of this Scottish history. Uh, so we are now fully caffeinated and we are off to do more adventuring. We are here at the Wallace Monument, we are just under it. We need to do a whole bunch of climbing up and then even more climbing up because obviously stairs. Anywho, uh, we have two more things to tell you about in this video, but uh, if you are a patron, you will get an extra video from this trip because we also did a couple extra things. So yeah, why don't you head on to Patreon and take advantage of that. There's going to be a little video there coming out very soon uh, about a whole bunch of uh, tiny things to see and eat and do. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a little bonus for the ones of you who want to support. Now I'm going to take my head out of this gross hole. The William Wallace Monument is 11 pounds to climb, and once you hit that cupola open to all of Scotland's elements, you might either think, wow, that was so worth it, or alternatively, oh god, am I gonna die being flung off a tower and while I am still out of breath after all of those stairs. 
Getting up to the monument is already a bit of a hike, but you can also take their little shuttle bus. Of course, the monument itself is quite climb heavy, and if you're not a big fan of tight spaces, you might want to reconsider. But on the inside, you will learn a lot about the military history of William Wallace, and also some other figures of Scotland's history. And of course, as it always seems to be the case with Stirling, the views are stunning. The Bannockburn Visitor Centre is where you get to be guided through the Battle of Bannockburn, watching the battle and its strategies unfold, and even try some of the historically accurate weapons hands-on. So if you have kids that just like to like hit each other with swords and spears, this is probably your top choice. Keep in mind you'll have to fit into one of the scheduled tours, which costs 850 or is free if you're a member of the National Trust for Scotland. The outdoor area has a plenty of information boards installed too, so if you don't mind braving the elements and having a little read, you can actually learn a lot about the battle without having to partake in one of the tours. Congratulations, you made it to the end of our Stirling guide. Yay! Hopefully you enjoyed it. We had a great time here in Stirling. And I would say that one of my final thoughts on Stirling is it is worth so much more than just a little day trip from Edinburgh. Now, if you're short on time, or money, then obviously this is still an option. The connection between Edinburgh and Stirling, or even Glasgow and Stirling, or Highlands and Stirling, is really convenient. And from Stirling, it is also really easy to travel around all of these like little towns that have interesting things going on here. Uh, by the way, on my Patreon, a video all about that coming soon, so check that out. Um, but yeah, I think that staying overnight was really pleasant. We stayed for two nights uh, in a place called Friars Wind and um, it was this like old uh, refurbished building. Um, it was kind of confusing, like so so many fire doors. This is just like a little bit of, of culture shock for me as someone not originally from the UK. Why do you have so many fire safety doors? Surely you will just get stuck trying to figure out which way they open. Anyway, <laughs> rant over. It was quite cute. They did have a, a delicious cooked dinner and also within the price we paid, which was probably about like 70 pounds per night, so really cheap. Uh, breakfast was involved in that and they had such a great choice of cooked breakfasts every day. So um, yeah, I overall would recommend. Hello, hi. <laughs> so overall, if you are at all interested in Scottish history, you definitely need to prioritize coming to Stirling because there is so much here to learn. Almost, again, like if you are coming for just one day, it might be a bit too much info for your brain to take in. So I think that stretching it over maybe two days might be a bit milder, a bit, a bit easier for you to actually internalize and learn from. Uh, yeah, I, I will probably now go home and my brain will just have to like deflate for a bit. Like I'm just like full of knowledge now. <laughs> okay, so that is truly it for me. Don't forget, as I said before, there is an extra bonus video about a couple of extra places to visit in this area on my Patreon. This is the address. If you join as one of the paying members, you will get access to a monthly bonus video. So yeah, I bet you will enjoy that. Uh, trust me. <laughs> Also, you can support me by buying something from my Etsy shop. There's going to be a link in the doobly-doo. And also, I am somewhat active on Instagram under KakiBot for my artwork or Kaki blog for my photography and just general life in Scotland. Okay, getting cold now, so I'm going to wrap this up. I shall see you soon. Bye. <laughs>